Math 31, I had a question on section 3.5. I had one separately for 57, 61, oops, excuse me, 53, 57, and 61. And since they all kind of touch on the same topic, I'm just going to lump them all into one video. So I'm going to go through the just the, the basics, like how you can identify what kind of transformations have, have happened with these graphs, and then I'm gonna give a little bit of an explanation. So I, I will go back and do this. So here, here's the basic ones, just going 53, 57, and 61. So if I look at 53, anytime you have a negative symbol out in front of the function, so outside the grouping symbols, when I say grouping symbols, I'm referring to, we have some parentheses, and inside those grouping symbols, those parentheses are the letter X. So this, this negative sign is outside the grouping symbol. So when that happens, anytime you see a negative there, it's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. And let me give you a for instance. I want you to think of the graph y equals x squared. That's one of your toolkit functions. All right, and if you don't remember, you should know what your toolkit functions look like. All right, your toolkit functions start on page 174. So take a look at those and make sure you know those toolkit functions. But I think you'll give me that this basic toolkit function looks like a little bit of a U, right? There's our parabola. Now, I want you to think what this graph would look like if I had a negative out in front of it. If I wanted to graph negative x squared, it would reflect over the x-axis. All right, so you can see this reflection across the x-axis or over the x-axis because basically, whatever y value you got from this function it became negative over here. And when y values go from being positive to negative, they reflect over the x-axis. So that's just a little explanation as to how that came to be. Now, 57 might be a little bit less intuitive, um, especially if you haven't seen trig functions yet. And, and you, might, you, you may or may not have seen trig functions, but I, I would say this not really comes into play, but comes into play with trig functions. That's probably where I see it the most often. So if you've graphed trig functions before, great. And if you haven't, that's okay, you'll get there. But what happens here is when you have a multiplier, right, which we do have a constant here, we have a five. When you have it, and I wanna stress this, when you have it inside the grouping symbols, right? So I have a multiplier or a constant inside the parentheses. Anything that happens inside those grouping symbols is counterintuitive. And what I mean by that is you see this five times x, but really what this does is it's gonna compress your x-axis by a factor of one-fifth. So that five compresses the x-axis. Oops, that's not how you spell compresses. Compresses x-axis, or the horizontal, I shouldn't say the x-axis, but it, it's a horizontal compression by a factor of one-fifth. And I don't mean that it shrinks the entire x-axis, but it shrinks the x-axis that you're graphing. And here's, here's a little for instance. Let's say you had a function, and it was just called f of x. All right, and let's just say I plugged in 1 to this function. And I don't have a, a function to evaluate, but I want you to see here. If I plug in x equaling 1, I get f of 1. Okay, so if I was going to graph this, this would be the ordered pair 1 comma f of 1. All right, now let's think of a different function. All right, we'll call this f of 5x. Now, in order to get a 1, an f of 1 to pop out, I don't have to put in x equals 1 this time. All I have to do is plug in 1 fifth, right? I need a fifth of that. I'm going to get compressed by a factor of 1 fifth because if I did this, this would be f of 5 times 1 fifth, which would be equal to f of 1. So you see I still get this f of 1 here, but I don't have to put in x equaling 1 anymore. I have to put in x equaling 1 fifth. I just don't have to put in as large of an x value because I had a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 fifth. All right, down here on 61, so we have a couple things happening. We should take note that I have a negative inside the grouping symbol, and I have a multiplier outside the grouping symbol. So whenever you have a negative inside the grouping symbol, this isn't going to reflect over the x-axis like it did in 53. This is going to be a reflection over the y-axis. All right, and then this multiplier of 3 out here, this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. All right, 
So that's how we can start to identify those. And you can play around with different functions to see how this would play out. But a lot of these transformations, they really have to deal with inside the grouping symbol versus outside the grouping symbol. And, and you've got a bunch of options there that you wanna take a look at. So our, our transformations, right, we can multiply by a constant. We can add a constant, or I should say add or subtract a constant. And then we can multiply by a negative. And these are our transformations, keeping in mind that all of these can happen inside the grouping symbols or outside grouping symbols. So really, you have six types of transformations that you have, oops, inside grouping, let me erase this and write grouping symbols, excuse me. Okay, so all of these can have, or can happen inside the grouping symbols or outside the grouping symbols. So we just, we have to keep track of what's happening here. So just to kind of reiterate, let me change my highlighter color. All right, so here I had a multiplier outside the grouping symbol. Here I had, excuse me, not a multiplier. I had a negative outside the grouping symbol. Here I had a negative inside the grouping symbol, right? Here I had a multiplier inside the grouping symbol. Here I had a multiplier outside the grouping symbol. Now what neither of these three examples did, they didn't add constants in or outside. So what I mean by that is these, these problems could be extended, like I might have a plus four here and a minus seven here. So we have stretching, shrinking, or stretching and compressing, all right? We have shifts up and down, left and right, and then we have reflections across the x-axis and across the y-axis, and that's what we have to balance with all of these transformations. But one of the more important things is you gotta know what these toolkit functions look like. One of the main points in Math 31 is if I give you a function, you have some idea of what that graph looks like, and you can talk to me about the traits that, that are involved with that graph. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.